And we're back. Looking pretty in this, see? Got some issues. Then again, it's always good to remember if Ines had to copy his own painting, he wouldn't put everything in the same exact spot. Catches my eye. Fixing it. Okay. So, over here, it's already dark enough. And it's bring need to start bringing it forward. Just for giggles. That is straight. Well, not straight. It's been thinned with some medium. Transparent earth red. And this is that same color with some permanent orange and I'm going to add some yellow and this all feels kind of muddy. I think I'm going to pull back and go ahead and add some perline red back to the permanent orange. I'll well, we need it lighter. I don't need that cherry red tone though, that's the thing. Perlene's got that cherryish feel. Maybe a little yellow ochre, get some opacity. Yeah, it's not bad. So it's a bit reddish. I'm gonna add some Transparent earth yellow. Shouldn't worry about making a mark. This may be a little wrong. Because um, all of it adds up to the story of the painting. Let's see about this. This color in here. It's not even that bright. It's built up of a lot of different things. That's that's very light. But I think the whole purpose right now of what's going on today is to get things a bit lighter. So Dry brushing is somewhat of a factor here, but I don't want dry brushing tends to break down into very small zones. So you don't want to get too much of that going on. What I have now is kind of reddish. If I was doing this right, I would have had a camera on my palette. Good. Good 
your brush starts getting like that, wipe it off. This guy is showing here today. He's got his act together with the online marketing, marketing all together. A very talented painter as well, but he really has a good feel for the marketing. His pricing is good. He knows what he's doing. through my own marketing phase with me. Because, pardon me, I want to do some, I'll really sell this with some glaze over the top, a nice reddish glaze or yellowish glaze. Yeah, I like that. some of my transparent earth red. Now when I went in straight with that it wasn't working but I've added a ton of different colors to my little when I do this sort of thing it's a dry brush and into here a bit of the alizarin crimson. That's good. Good. wasn't quite a dry brush. But it is hitting the board very lightly. So you end up with an effect like that. You can always bear it down a little. Yeah, I want to pull in some yellow. Mostly because I want to lighten it. I'm going to go yellow, transparent earth red. The yellow, of course, has a bit of a green, green quality. So we don't we have a lot of nice darkness which we lose with every stroke. That pulls things together a little bit. It's uh, noise, 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 noise. Yeah. Noise. Noise. 
okay. See some deeper reds. We've got perline and transparent earth red. Here, I want to get into some of this. This is a place for a few of these cherry red notes. Too much. That's too much. Not good, John. Not much too much, though. Like I said, it tells a story. A little bit of struggle is okay. That's today's theme. Too much struggle. Ah, get rid of it. Paint another painting over the top of it. That's what the nest did. Okay, I'm liking that. Now it felt important to me, well I'm going to go a step or two lighter because I'm thinking of this uh, glazing I want to do coming up. So if this is too dark, the glazing will make things really dark. That uh, seems a bit mad, but it looks good. Seems mad, looks good. Sounds like you're cutting down a tree or something around here. Okay, while well, we're over here. A lot of this going on, there's a lot. Now if you have color in your brush and you hit the black, you're not going to be anywhere even close to black. Just so you know. What you'll have is a muddier version of what whatever was on your brush. Which is one of the reasons why um, a lot of teachers of painting don't give their students black at all. Because what they do is make these muddy, ugly paintings. I couldn't paint without black though these days. I, I started with no black. I didn't have any black for years. Uh, you find a way, but then you, after a while you say, well, why am I doing my best to mix black when I could just use black? I know it's crazy. I'm talking crazy. Little leaves, little marks. Fortunately, because I got this area is kind of I don't want this looking floppy I want to look organic that's where the knife comes in
they get pipe effects, break it up with a leaf or something. And after all, it's a tree. After all. A little more of this uh, transparent earth, blues and crimson. Again, I'm thinking. really going to sell everything then. I don't usually glaze twice either, just so you know. But I believe that Ines did. And that's enough for me when I'm doing an Ines, okay? Perlene red. More little bits down here. Don't want to lose it all. Just get a paper towel. I said this seems a little flat compared to the chroma and saturation I'm looking at with the reference but when I give it a glaze with some perlene red it's just gonna go pow pow man pow okay wipe off our brush now we get into brownish reds and things here most of these are a bit more subdued I'm just gonna go into uh, that's what my palette's looking like Gonna go into that reddish area there with some of this raw umber. The color killer. The warm color killer and that's not I don't want to go too light, but I need to do something because this is also very dark. Again, it's a straight line, but it's not straight, if that makes sense. And then as we get over in here, we're getting to some greens. A nice mix of greens and reds and all sorts of stuff. I decided, mentally at least, to save the tree for pretty much one of the last things I do. So not too much dry brushing. You can see that's that dry brushing effect. A bit of stabbing mixed with dry brushing. Now yellow ochre is going to be the place where red meets green. Well, we're talking about landscape painting. Landscape painting, the definition of landscape painting is red meets green. With the blue sky. If you paint blue skies, and that'll do many of those. And this is a bit much, but that's okay. I need to, sometimes you've got to go too far and then back off. It'd be pretty easy to back off. I can't have all this just straight dark. It's going to have some, looking at his painting, there's a lot of interest in those shadows. Here's that log. Weird log, half-assed log. Oh, I wanna, now that's where some greens coming into place. So I don't want to get too nuts. A lot of weird greens. I'm going to get more romber. Romber also quite greenish, but it can go into red without too much hassle.
Ridley, um, one of the, the guy that's doing a painting demonstration here. His laugh is very similar to one of the studio holders. Hey, you hear it there? You probably maybe you can hear it on the video. It's a little different, but surprisingly close. Now, breaking this up. This is where the texture comes into play. It just, I guess that's dry brushing. It's a bit of stabbing, dry brushing. Yeah, like in that. Fresh paper towel. So, a pap is often better than a swipe. A pap and a pull. Because you don't want things looking all muddy. Pap and a pull. Okay, so we're going to start working in some green. And then you get some some real nice bright greens there, but um, I'm going to go ahead and scrape up this little bit of uh, reddish tones. Wipe it down. Not going to uh, squirt any um, whatever on there because yeah, we're going right in the green. So I put a lot of red in the greens anyway. Oops, I got a bit of a skin on the top of the screen. Sometimes I make too much. That's Mike's green. That's black and yellow. And I'm throwing in a bunch of um, transparent earth red. And it's exactly the color that's already there. That's okay, because I'm going to work off the edge. I'm going to bring in some more yellow. I want it. Oh, that's pretty. See, it's pretty because there's a big bunch of red there. There's a certain amount of red in the green as well. I've got too much paint on my brush right now. I'm going to, have to wipe this off. And while I don't want things breaking up too fine, I don't want coffee cups in the way. Maybe a little more yellow. So I find myself I'm painting and nothing showing. Um, so I know my color is too dark. It's very close to this NS effect. I know bits of green throughout. working in. Now as these greens go over this way they get progressively muddier. I like to use that edge of the brush a lot of the time that I'm doing grass. Yep, like that. Don't want to overwork it. This is not the plan. You don't want, first of all, everything to just get soft. For one. So you take your eyes away, you bring your eyes up, 
something jumps out at you, fix it then. Don't wait. Don't wait till you're photographing the painting. Yeah, I'm liking the green da 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 da, da. So, uh, into my mixture here um, with some of this uh, permanent green light. So it's a bunch of muddy greens I've got. Permanent green, there's not much muddy about it. Now, my problem with a lot of permanent greens from various different manufacturers is that uh, they're very transparent. The Gamblin is a good one. It has a nice amount of opacity. So, little highlights there. There's more chroma there. It's really sand. Um, green. So where a board texture really will help us. But, again, don't do this sort of thing because you're going to get a big uniform um, stipple effect. You don't really want that. Some areas is fine, like here. Even there. Bit of a stabby, stabby pappy. If that makes sense. More green here. Getting too okay. Not too much. I don't want too much. I might go into that with a little black when I come over in here. Mm -hmm. Like that. We actually might be uh, might be able to watch this guy's demo because it's almost three, and I've done most of the things I felt I had to do. I have to do these two trees, and uh, I could save the rest for a third pass, so that might be good. So, the thing with the nest. A lot of brush strokes, of course, but they're not really discernible as brush strokes. They're more discernible as textures. Yep, like it. All right, and I could go up one more level there. Take a look at this bunch of red I've got. Maybe just add a little. Add a little. Ochre. That's not a very pretty color though. Not that there's going to be a lot of this, but there's a bit of a highlight here. A bit of a lighter. And what's happening here is I've got a lot of pink there. Not a lot, but enough that trying to get a textured sort of thing happening isn't working. Yeah, it'd be interesting, go see a demo um, when I've been sitting here doing a demo myself all day. Let's see, watch someone else struggle. Not that I'm struggling, folks. Not. Now, one thing I noticed was that this is a lot. Once I got this reference on this television, I noticed this thing was higher. More yellow, more orange, back and forth, a little. Kind of a lot of white there, but
Yeah. I usually have some music or something going. It seems so quiet without it. That's okay. All for you. All for you. Dear subscriber. Pop that. A little more pop. Pop, pop, pop. And... More um, touch of pearling red. Yellow. That needs to go lighter. No. I don't want that harsh edge I just created, but I don't want this too pinched either, so <clears throat> there, basically just a little lighter treatment with the brush. I can do a bit more on that tree in the third color pass. Okay, we'll call that a day. I'm gonna go watch this guy's demo. See ya. Hey, we're back. Um, it's about two days after the last time I worked on this. You'll hear a little creak in here from the chair. And I thought um, this has, uh, this is the second coat and you can see it's, it's dry. Yeah, I checked it. Usually I check with the back of my, um, finger there. Uh, and I, you know, I, I've never shown, uh, this, uh, process as part of my videos and I won't be making a habit of it, but this is liquid. Liquid, yay. I don't paint with the liquid, but what I use liquid for... This is a very, very tail end of a bottle. And um, I'm not Scots, but I am pretty, pretty cheap. So I get every last bit out of it. It's not cheap stuff. This was 44 bucks New Zealand. That's, it's done now. Yeah. Throw it away. And a new bottle here. Yeah. You notice it's fresher and pinker when, uh, can you see that? Fresher and pinker. So that's why I, uh, I was buying an even larger size one. Uh, this is a 250 mil. And uh, good stuff. I love it. Um, what I do with it is, um, Basically, you can see in our painting here, we have areas of uh, matte and shine because um, the the new paint is very dull, and the old the old is shiny, probably uh, from this uh, coat of liquid I put over that. So I put the liquid over the top to just even everything out, help build up a stronger paint film. Is it good best practices? Uh, I've heard uh, varying arguments on that. Um, I, I like it and uh, this stuff is, you see when it dries, it's very, very tough and um, rubbery. And I think that's good because rubbery means uh, um, it's a bit elastic. So um, it creates a tough paint film though and I'm a believer in it. Although I'm not telling you to do this, I'm not. So don't blame me if you do it and you have some problems. I don't think you would, but I don't even know what that is, that old dot. Anyway, I thought it'd be fun to show you. Usually I don't do this flat. I have it, um, you know, my lap over, over here. But 
flip it flat for you today. So, can you see that? Okay. May as well promote the liquid brand, let's see. Okay, so this brush I've been using for <laughs> a couple of years now. I, and I just clean it out very well. Um, um, it's You can see it's been worn on the sides just from the action of the liquiding. Very interesting effect. Anyway, uh, I might even go into uh, my, my brush cleaning process afterwards since um, the... Uh, the uh, I always clean the brush after doing liquiding. Yeah, so can you before we get in you want to make sure you really do see those mad areas. Yeah, so it'll get this painting is getting a third pass. Oh look at that chunk. Don't want that in my painting. That shows you a bit of though this rubbery this rubbery liquidy stuff you get, yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. Now, uh, why don't I use it for my oil painting? For the actual oil painting, I use this uh, oil. Uh, mostly because the oil is cheaper. That's that's the long and short of it. Also, I like the uh, the liquid goes very uh, very liquid. Hopefully, you can see that. I'm going to make sure. So I put a. I don't. You know, you could just wipe it on with a paper towel, but I like to get a good coating on not so thick that um, it's actually holding a brush stroke and one interesting thing about the liquid is that it doesn't tend to hold brush strokes very well but it will hold some so I'll get into this technique for that but so right now I'm just getting an even coat across it's a bit like varnishing, except it's not varnish. Don't get it confused with varnish. The thing is, is in the future when um, art conservators uh, want to clean these, they're going to find they're dealing with liquid all the way down. I do varnish some of my work, but not all of it, not most of it. I don't really like varnish because I've got to remove it if I ever want to work on a painting again. It's just not good. I do believe that uh, given that there is a coating liquid over the top, they can probably get in there with some soap or detergent and do quite a lot of good cleaning that way. All right, I want to make sure this is an angle for you so you can kind of see. Yeah. Now you can see how, now I can really see what I've painted. Before um, I can't uh, because uh, uh, the matte areas are throwing me off. I can't really dredge my values correctly. That's how I got into doing this. Now this liquid coating will be dry tomorrow. Tomorrow's Sunday, and uh, I won't be here. So I can got work to do at home. working on getting that liquid you know that's there on the edge because like I said kind of cheap anyway I like to get the most the most out of my materials I don't waste waste not want not is how I was brought up all right so pap 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 will I have enough to actually get this whole painting covered I think so if I but don't need a thick coat, especially since this is the second application of liquid over my second pass. So this painting will be done with the third pass and then it'll get a final coat of liquid just to even everything out. So this is my uh, my thing. At this point, I don't leave it. Hopefully, you can see there's some brush strokes there. Yep, see those? Yeah, don't leave it like that. I have a technique. That's holding the brush like this and going like this and with short shorter strokes and that and always with the imagined and the, this case there is no wood grain because this is textured MDF but I still have a mental grain going that's horizontal um, by the way if you're trying to do horizontal paintings of vertical grain, I think you're fighting an uphill battle, but that's just my two cents. I've seen people do it. 
I've seen good artists do it, but it's distracting to me. Horizontal grain for horizontal painting, a vertical grain for vertical painting if you're painting on wood. If you're painting on textured MDF like I am now. Um, Alright, so I look uh, look around and uh, lots of times too I'll just uh, wipe off my brush. Do a little, I look for, let's see if you can see this. I can see an area of raised stuff right there. Uh, maybe, yeah. I notice on the screen, on the computer screen, you really can see it. So uh, I will get that. And that's why I wiped off my brush. This is just a little fine. And you see this kind of almost half circular. I don't want straight strokes. I like little little like uh, almost like uh, the uh, when you look at a wicker basket you see that sort of little half round interwoven sort of thing now these strokes will disappear um, and the reason they're going to disappear is because I'm doing this if you just lay in a bunch of liquid real thick you'll be surprised how many it will hold on to some of those liquidy brush strokes I don't want that I don't want the brush strokes from my painting and the texture of the board to be the thing to, to shine through so I look at it with the glare, anything that catches my eye, and we've talked a lot about that. Sometimes there have been times where I've done this sort of thing, where I have a vertical element. Why not? Yeah, I don't do a lot of that though, because most of these strokes aren't going to, they're not going to make it. Nice, even. And that's that. So, and one of the reasons that's Saturday today, so I'm getting ready to do this painting up here. Second color pass. And but I wanted to uh have this ready for Monday so that we can wrap this thing up. Um and I'm doing some work at home in my home office on the um Past Masters series day twenty-four. There's actually going to be 26 days. You'll find that out. There's always been 20. There's always 26 days in the 25 days. Although I'm not calling this 25 days of tonalism, I'm calling it past master series. And I'm going to decide uh, what I'm going to do with the uh, the next volume of the past master series. So that I'm going to call. I probably won't even call it past master series two. I'll just just keep numbering after 26. So this maybe will be 27. We'll see. Anyway, thought you guys might enjoy seeing that part of my process. The visible part of the process. Uh, I do a lot of things that are visible you don't see on camera. And so uh, since this is going to be a super long video, I'll wear you out. I'll wear you out with these long videos. Well, I've noticed the brushstroke video I put up, which is real time. Um, got quite a few views. So, quite a few views. That's surprising to me because it's like watching paint dry. <laughs> I put up real time videos of me painting. Uh, well, this is going up. It's going on up to YouTube. And I did decide I'm just going to share this with uh, everybody, not just mailing list. But um, I've got to come up with something special for the people on the mailing list. And uh, <clears throat> that I have another version of this painting. Uh, oh yeah, another thing I do. Right now I can see places where there's like little mm, hairs or other little things. Get them out now. Get them out now. Wow, this painting's looking really rich. Almost done. I mean, I could even walk away from it at this point, but there's a few things I want to cement in. I'm real happy with the, the richness and color of it. This is going to go a little notch. Um, redder yeah, but it's very close to done and uh, I'm pretty happy with it pretty happy yeah gonna be just a probably that last session won't even be that long really it won't be not a lot that's got to be done to this painting anyway yeah I could see I don't know if they're hairs be interesting look at them under a microscope but a little catching a little glints of light 
What happens is little tiny hairs, they roll up into little bowls. It's great. Anything real serious, I might even dig out with my my knife, but this looks pretty good. Anyway, liquiding. I do it. Should you do it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I do it, and I've done it a lot. So, um, do I recommend it? I can't tell you if it's a good best practice, but it works for me, and it, I think it creates a strong paint film, and I already said that. So, we'll see you real soon. Take good care. Stay out of trouble. Just remembered, uh, I said I'd show you a little bit about brush cleaning, and it occurs to me, uh, I might split this off as its own little separate video. But, um, so here's the brush from our liquiding. Now, <clears throat> I have a little jar with some um, mineral spirits in it that uh, I usually, if, I, if it's paint in the brush, um, I use that um, prior to uh, getting into this. This is uh, called Brush and Hand Cleaner, Art Spectrum, good brand. Uh, this stuff works better than the bar of soap, by the way, so just so you know. The bar of soap will work, though, if you're on a real budget. I mean, it lasts forever. I spent, um, well, 60 bucks, but this is probably uh, maybe a year and a half supply. And it's got quite dry because I left it open a few times. Anyway, in here is just some water. Uh, water just for this purpose only. And I will... Um, I have a habit of just kind of testing it because uh, a lot of times I might have six or seven brushes so I'll dip them in the water and then roll it and I can tell if it's got the mineral spirits on it and it's beating up. This isn't beating up because it's just got liquid in it. But uh, So we're going to get some of this, uh, about that much, that's plenty. Work it in. I want to get this stuff. Yeah, waste not, want not, right? And then a uh, bit more water. So, I used to go through these liquiding brushes. They'd only last about six months. This one's gone a year and a half. So there's really nothing you can do to increase the lifespan of your brushes more. And also, when I'm cleaning, I'm pulling back, like, away from the ferrule. Don't go pushing things into the ferrule. O is back, back, not forward, okay? It might look like I'm going forward, but I'm, you know, I'm lifting up and pulling back, lifting up, pulling back, and smushing down. Wipe that off. Uh, to be honest, I might not clean it any more than that, although if I've got, I've got some stuff left here, what I'll do a lot of times, finish up, get some more water. Get that liquid out out. This works remarkably well, like I say, a year and a half on this liquiding brush where that's, and it's still got plenty of life. It's not stiff. What happens is they got all stiff. You'd be amazed. You, you, the, with this stuff, um, you can clean a brush in a uh, jar. I have a jar with a screen in it and uh, mineral spirits and I'll go three, four times and think, uh, and rub it out in a paper towel. No paint comes out. Um, if I go into the soap and the water afterwards, a ton of paint will come out. So if you're not doing this, you definitely want to do it. And I'll probably pop this up as its own little video just to help everybody out. Because uh, I mentioned this on the channel before, but sometimes a uh, picture is worth a thousand words. Anyway, take good care. Stay out of trouble. Hey, it's your painter in residence here. Um, thought I'd just kind of do a little zoom around so you the real mess of course back there but just show you oh you can see some of it there we go oh my goodness up in the front of course gallery area that is our uh, reference I think I'm gonna leave it on that today I don't need uh, to get any more details in I'm just gonna do that is our current status we'll be zooming in on that in a minute the work area, the cup. You just heard the pot boiling. I'm gonna have a cup of tea. 
I don't know. Here's our drawing area here. Don't know how long this session will be today. I've got a friend who texted me. He's probably going to be coming by. And uh, so, anyway, here we are. I wonder, I'm curious. I'm not actually try it filming up high. Usually I have it up low. Well, let's just zoom in. That's definitely not better. They're whistling. Now, this is almost done. Very close. We don't have a lot to do. We're going to do. Let me sit down here. So if I can. Okay. How are we doing here? Yeah, okay. So, what needs to be done? Well, like I said, it's Monday. This might be two sessions. Depends on when my mate shows up. If he shows up. I decided not to wait. I'm going to put you guys on the front burner. Except I do need a cup of tea. And I like to have both tea and coffee in my Mr. Happy cup. Mr. Happy. Mr. Happy laughed and laughed. Now, Mr. Happy's in English. Sorry for all the creaks and bangs and knocks. We'll be settling down in one minute. Tea. I was going to have a bit of coffee, but I left it on before um, lunch. And it smells rank. I just dumped it into a little, I like a little creek in front of my uh, studio here. It's actually, I, <laughs> a creek I guess is ambitious. The water runs off there, but it's always a little bit of a stream, a little trickle. Anyway, so what are we going to do? Uh, well, ah, uh, this is our previous one. I have a film of that. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but that's done. I was real happy with it. And then I thought, I started thinking about the Annette's proportions and the the fact that he, when uh, I, and this whole big bunch of Annette's I'm going to be doing coming up, I noticed that very consistently he liked this proportion, regardless, irregardless of the size of the actual painting. So... I think that's interesting. Now, um, oh, yeah, it's out of this handy, I guess. Oh, won't be doing much on the bottom there, so I think we can cover that. How much of this can you see? Yeah, we'll zoom up for a minute. Okay. Red glaze here. Very light yellow glaze here and here. No other glazing required. Usually I don't glaze uh, twice, but uh, in the case of Ness, I believe he did, so I am too. You can see there's a nice vivid quality that, that I got here that's not as present here. That's the, the glaze, and we'll be doing that shortly. Uh, the little marks here, little marks. Pump this up a little. Um, perhaps a little more bits of this and that there. Definitely this branch needs to go in and it needs to be more present here. I kind of held back here It should have been a little more white. In fact, I might even pop that in here. Now I have my $26 brush Kolinsky That's for this Gonna use it $26 brush. I think it's 26 Could have been. Yep. 26 uh, And I'm usually a big believer in using a bigger brush than necessary, but for some bits, why do it? Anyway, put that aside. Uh, and I'll zoom back in. Let's get into some uh, glazing. I know we have time at least for the glazing before my, my mate shows up. Like I said, if he shows up, 
he's got a fairly new baby, so uh, a little bit of melt here. It's probably because I left a. I keep my um, my pallet in the fridge, a little mini fridge I got cheap. I've been using it for years, and uh, that keeps the paint from drying. It's been. I did do some painting on Saturday, as a matter of fact. Wow. I have to say that this new um, Alkoid uh, from Windsor Newton that was replacing the one I've been having a problem with from Gamblin, that stuff dries, man. It dries on the palette, it cakes, which is good because um, I've had a lot of issues lately with that slow drying on the Gamblin. And I'm a loyal Gamblin user, but uh, no, I don't think it comes, uh, I don't think I'm that loyal when it comes to Ivory Black. Okay. Funny, funny that, isn't it? I need that quick drying on the black. A little sippy tea. So, we'll start with our uh, lightest glaze first. Actually, maybe I will. Let me see. I can pull this out. There we go. You can see what I'm up to. You can probably see enough of what I'm up to. I'll work up here. So, for this area, like I mentioned, very, very subtle glaze. I'm going to use some of this um, Hansa Yellow Medium. If you can see that, a tiny amount. I don't need very much. I'll put some uh, of our medium in here. Now you can do this with um, straight up uh, linseed oil. You don't have to use quick drying oil. I use quick drying oil. That's what I want. On oil, on oil, on oil. All right. Make sure we got whole roll of paper towels here. For a small amount like this I will just scoop some out with the brush. I don't need a lot. And what I'm doing is very subtle but you'll see it's going to have a significant impact. Now I think um, I'm going to add the tiniest amount of uh, permanent orange to that just to counteract a bit of that green tendency. Now what's on the knife here I will actually put on to my paper towel and I'll use that as the area for doing the uh, glazing whoa it's so powerful subtle yet powerful also these blue areas I wanted them to have that greenish cast you get from the glaze that is nice and then I'll wipe some off now this could be lighter, maybe should be lighter, but I like that. I'm going to leave it alone. I, I, I well, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. That's why I often hesitate to. Oh, we'll put that back up. Sorry. Uh, I often hesitate to uh, to even do a third pass on paintings because it's a very difficult to stop yourself. All right, moving up. Bigger knife. This thing doesn't really fit in my. I don't need a lot of this either. It's very, um, I'm going to use um, some of this perline red. I have it right there already. I was talking to um, a fellow artist here at the studio about my big afternoon plan to get on this. So I've got this bigger knife because, because I do. Yeah, about that much I reckon. And just for giggles, this is a very transparent color, very transparent, and it's going to have a wicked result. I'm tempted to hit it with some of this, um, this is not going to, actually they have a color where they mix permanent orange with the perline red, and I thought, well, why not just have perline red and permanent orange, and I can mix them together myself. I put the tiny amount in there, why? Because... I do little things that sometimes don't seem to matter, but they could matter. They might matter. 
Okay, so find a uh, good flat spot. We've got a whole video about this. Subtle. A little too subtle. I want it stronger. As a matter of fact, I'm not even going to add a lot of oil. I'm just going to go straight in with paint. That's the effect I want. I like that. And then I'll rip some off. I always glaze and then back off. I can see a few areas I'm going to pull up. That's okay. Because glazing is almost never just glazing. It's always um, you apply the glaze and then you have to bring things back up. I'm just going to use a little brush too. I don't need to. Now a lot of times what I'll do, by the way, is um, I'll work directly into my pile of glaze. Okay, I want it that pretty vivid as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in if it's on all the same to you, just for consistency. If it's not all the same to you, let me know. Very subtle. I like to say I don't want it. That's a little light. Adding more red and a touch of um, and wipe the brush off. And a touch of uh, transparent earth red. Touch of perlene red. Go a notch. I don't worry about those being too light. That's still that's still quite. I want it vivid though, so I'm darkening it not with the black or anything. I'm darkening it with the. Uh, I need more perlene red. I don't want things to go too earthy on me. Very, there's a lot of real subtle stuff going on with this painting. I did see, I was trying to find some information about it for you online. And I can't find the actual size. I think it's at the Delaware Museum of Art. Delaware, Delaware is a state in the U.S. Didn't know, and you'd be surprised how many <laughs> people from the U.S. might not know. There are 50 of them after all. A little bit of uh, very light dry brushing. Um, because I saw some zoom ins. Yeah. And you can see there's a lot of little specks of interest there. I don't want these pipes. I see pipes. I don't want like same same shape, same shape. If you catch those things before you're hanging your painting up in the gallery, <laughs> you know, fix them. I get the pipes. I get the pipes a lot less than I used to. And when I look at my old work, I see pipes. Now the whole painting takes a turn up here towards a more ochery earthy color. I'm going to add some uh, transparent earth, yellow, and some ochre. I've already painted this so I don't need to paint it again, but that's what we do in the third pass. We make things pop a bit, fix any problems that you still find. Nothing like a finger for fixing issues. This has got a bit more life in it than um, so I'm coming in here with some uh, transparent earth yellow and some alizarin crimson, which is going to give me a color quite a lot like uh, transparent earth red, but um, there's a bit of a ruby quality I'm perceiving that I know I'll get from the alizarin. This color is maybe, well, it's, it's dark. I made it dark on purpose. I don't want it taken over. I don't want this, um, I want that red, rich red quality. Yeah, that's a little better. It's subtle. This is everything we're doing at this juncture is subtle.
like you can see how red that is. Time to, okay, time to get the black out. My new favorite black. Where are you? Ta da! Griffin alkaloid. <clears throat> That's stuff. I got to put it only a little on the palate because when they say alkaloid, they mean it. That sucker dries quick. So, <clears throat> if you, if you think, this is what we're doing here. I mean, it's like you weren't paying attention. That red really took over over there. I can see that. A little. Let's see, as, as, as good as I used to, um, I rely more and more on these glasses. I, well, I've always worn glasses, but I used to have decent close up vision. Like, there's a big blob of something in there I decided to leave today. You know, I don't feel the need to get too into, remind me I said that, restating dark areas, but, yeah, okay. Um, that said, I'd like to take a crack at a rich, really oiled down. I'm going to bring in some uh, into this mix that I've got here. Some raw umber uh, because this is a little too plain and facey. Um, I'm going to use the dry brush just very subtly, add some character to that before I pop a little more yellow in there. Okay, getting close, getting close. Ah, while we're here making all these. Um, over here we've got this like um, almost a coral type tone so you know you get coral <clears throat> by adding a yellow and white to red that give you coral and the red I'm going to use as a perline because it's a painted barn so you don't really see you might see this color in a flower in nature but you won't see it on too many trees they'll tend to go more earthy more yellow Yeah, just white alone and you'll get pink. Just yellow alone and you'll get orange. So a little Dory's painted in there. This is the first time I painted this subject this big. And um I'm down in this area, I'm seeing a few other things. Don't want to mess too much with my little glazing activity, but a couple of little marks down here. I'm not going to get too crazy with that. I'm pretty happy with the way it looks now. Whoa, are they going to start making noise over there? I'm going to have to cut this short before I get into the little tiny details. We'll see. Now on my palette. I've got this color. That was just a neighbor. There's a building that's being... Uh, well, there's an old, very old building there. He's got these. Little, that's even lighter and brighter than I'm going. Yellow, white, into that. And of course I've gone too far, but... It's alright, this is quite bright. A little thing here. It's quite bright. Well, we got the yellow. Well, we got the coral, the yellow. We'll go here. My way of knocking those sorts of things back is with uh, my finger. Another little guy here. Boop, boop. It's lighter. You can tell because I'm making marks and nothing shows up. Boop, 
Boop. Get some of that white. Now I could be doing this with that little brush. Maybe I should. But whatever. I'm, I'm used to not using little brushes. I try to make everything work with. This coffee I saw today was so different. <clears throat> yes, all right, fine. Um, well, I guess I've got I've got a light color. This is where the palette's at right now. Um, I got that little light color, and I'm thinking, well, if I just grab some yellow, when with what's on my brush and some white and raw umber, because I don't want this a facey. I want it lighter. I don't want it facey here. Some little things going on. I get a little more of that raw umber. The warm color killer. Raw umber. The warm color killer. Yeah, in fact, uh, well, by warm color killer, it also greens. It goes green. I ended up extending some of this tree in the last session. I remember that little dry brush there. Knock that back. Like that. And since the color I mixed is pretty close to what this little branch is going to be, it's time to get out the $26 Kolinsky. Uh, you could ink with that. You could do com I used to do comic book inking. So, just like every other brush, I start off by putting it in the medium. I'm going into this um, mixture I have here. With a little more yellow. And then, pulling the brush and rolling it towards me. That's an inker, that's an inker's technique. I was an inker long before I was a painter. Now a lot of people use the mall stick. I use my finger, my pinky. There, down, and I need more paint in there. I'll oh, pause for a minute. 